I really think it's important for everyone to kind of reanalyze this. I like the fact that you want us to go and just look at where you want to tip the scale into which favor a little bit and, mm. um, you know, realize that everyone's got 24 hours. So you have to decide if, if you're going to put, pour more time into one thing, you are going to take, to take away time from another. Uh, that's just the fact of life. Hey everyone, welcome to the RLT Podcast where we share some real life tools, tips and tricks to help you not only discover but also reach your ultimate goals. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to a brand new episode of the Real Life Tips Podcast. Your number one podcast for success tips, for life tips Mm -hmm. and for self growth tips. This is episode (laughs) number 39 and I'm your host Mono. You're joined by Leon as usual. That was probably our fourth take on the episode number. We can't believe we are on (laughs) episode 39. So Mono actually just recorded that it's episode 9. Jeez man, welcome back. What a crazy world we are living in at the moment. It's been a rough week. I think Mani and I've uh, you know, <laughs> worked quite hard in our day jobs this week. And just it's such a nice time during the night once or twice a week to come here and record a little bit of alternative gospel, if you'd like, you know, bringing some method to the madness. You know, it's just we're living in such stra- strange times. Um, I actually try and not look at media and things like that too much but every time i do i just realize that this Mm. is such a such a weird time that we're living in so welcome i hope that this uh episode can maybe distract you a little bit from the strange life that we are living at the moment and hopefully we're gonna bring something tonight that's gonna help you cope with the reality a little bit better and with that, I'm going to hand over back to you, Martin. What are we going to discuss tonight? Yeah, tonight is all about success. And we, we've chatted about success so many times in the past. But we're going to bring a brand new spin on this. We're going to bring a brand new perspective on this. Because tonight is all about success demands sacrifice. So we're going to chat a little mm. bit more about sacrifice. What does that mean? Uh, of course, we all know that we need to sacrifice some things to gain in other areas of our lives. Uh, But really what the main idea is behind tonight's episode is we're going to extrapolate on this topic immensely. We're going to find a new perspective on success and what that really means for us. But again, how can we achieve that? And looking at your sacrifice in general, because at the end of the day, nothing in life is free. Mm. We we know this. We've heard this so many times. You know, you, you get caught up in these crazy scams where people tell you, you've won something. Everything is cool. And you know, you you didn't even do anything for it. Nothing in this life is free. Yeah. And once you start realizing that this actually applies to the success that you have in mind, the goals that you have set for yourself and everything, I think the penny will just drop and you'll understand that it's up to you to decide what you are willing to sacrifice because the bottom line is you will have to sacrifice something. So again, I think it's going to be a great one, Leon, because we're going to deep dive into some specific tips on how you can actually really, really narrow down your focus and start understanding what it is that you need to do in order to accomplish your goals. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a it's a difficult topic. It's something that means different things to different people as well. You know, so success, I think we've discussed this at length in previous episodes but i mean success means different Mm -hmm. things to different people and it can either be you know financial success i think that is the stereotype of what most people agree upon as being successful and then there are other people that say success is about happiness and joy and that might be you know spiritual Mm -hmm. family etc Now, I'm going to ask you a very, very awkward question, and I know that a lot of people are going to shy away from answering this, and this is typically, you know, I sit at the end of a microphone coming through in bits and bites through your eardrums right now, so I can say this very, very um, (laughs) hidden from um, your actual Mm. reaction, but how many times have you looked at other people and considered them successful and have that immediate jealousy wondering how did they achieve that like we grew up at the same time yeah. more or less the same life more or less the same environment yeah. same type of parents same type of cars that we drove uh went to church went to school all that stuff but maybe you don't match up mm. financially maybe that person's got a way better relationship with their kid or their daughter or whatever 
maybe that person just has a very good spiritual life and he's uh, you know he's he's got very good religion in his life and you you know admire mm. that i know for a fact that i i hardly ever encounter people that i don't think in that way about like immediately assessing yeah. how successful yeah. they are in different departments and i can say this cuz i've started just not caring about oversharing on this um but i feel by me maybe opening up and saying that i definitely do that maybe a lot of people that are in denial of doing that would agree that you always meet new friends people acquaintances and immediately assess their level of success without even realizing you do yeah. it and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. most of us beckon the question how do they do that it seems like we have an equal seemingly equal launch pad and and like we got dealt the same kind of cards but one guy's just more successful than the other that is what makes this episode so interesting is because you don't know the behind the scenes how many sacrifices that person had to make in one of those areas whether it's spiritual or family or friendships or um, whatever it might be being at work a yep. lot in order to reach an you know obscene amount of success in one of those regions it's very very seldom that you'll find people that's got their you know all those areas covered it all at once. Oh, that, that requires absolutely. the world of luck. Look, and the one thing that we need to take into consideration here, and this is what really stood out to me when thinking about this specific topic, is the fact that we all sort of see that as just life and the way that things unfolded for them versus mm. the life and the, the way things unfolded for us. But we don't realize that we've got so much control over that actually. Mm. We think that this is something that's completely outside of our control, right? But if we start understanding that success is actually something that is so in, in your control, as long as you've got the right puzzle pieces to fit them together, you can build your own success. Yeah. And that's probably what they did. In some cases, I feel that some people are very conscious about it. Um, they're very mindful of the, the moves they make in life to achieve that success. But in other cases... You know, it might happen subconsciously mm. through ways that they've been trained on how to accomplish certain things, achieve certain goals or or solve certain problems. Yeah. But once we become aware of the puzzle pieces that exist in this thing called success, I feel that you get a lot of control over what that means for you, number one, and what and how you can achieve that and how effectively you can achieve that as well. Yeah. So and I think that's that's really what's interesting out of this specific topic here tonight, Leon, is because I think we have to address one core function right here, right now. And that's the fact that everything in life demands a yeah. sacrifice. And I, I briefly scraped the surface on it in the introduction, but let's quickly just touch on that because once you understand that this is a universal law, you can see that it actually applies to so many different parts yeah. of your life. A very good example that I have of this, um, and I actually experienced this first, and I had the pleasure of running a small team at one point in my previous career, well, my previous job, and I hired two people which on paper were exact copies, like carbon copy of one another. And that was the whole objective. I had to have two similar skilled people doing exactly the same job. There was just too much for one to handle. That's why I needed two. Now, the funny mm -hmm. thing is that I quickly realized that they were super different. The one person had a very good social life, very good family life, and, and, and a good work-life balance, if you'd like. And the other did not. He was very much leaning towards having a work-come-first balance and a smaller family life. I've got no problem with it, again, even till this day. Mm. Um, but maybe he neglected family and social a little bit in order to um, spend more time with his job. Now, fast forward five years, and I'm, so I'm not going to go through that entire story here, but... Um, from a personality perspective, completely different people. Attitude was completely different people. Mm. But if you had to put them next to each other and ask them to critique one another's success, the one would be mm -hmm. admiring the other. The one would admire the one's like work success. And the other person mm. is probably admiring the guy's dedication towards work. And it all mm. came at a price mm. for both of them. So 
for example, the one guy that had a very good family balance and, and work-life balance, which is probably a healthy choice for various reasons, maybe he didn't reach work success as fast as the other because the other guy instead of mm. spending a lot of time with family maybe spending a lot of time socializing and stuff like that he spent that time studying that guy raked up certification upon certification he became the best at his job in record time but i wouldn't exactly mm. say that he was happy he was just very well accomplished mm. in his job which probably makes him happy but the funny thing is the other person had a very, very good family thing going. You know, he was out with his uh, parents and he saw them frequently. His kids loved him and adored him. His wife and him has a good marriage and so on. And you can see that. But he maybe wasn't achieving as much at work as the other. Yeah. Because how do you kind of compete with a guy that's putting 14, 15 hours a day into work? Yeah. But then again, how does the other guy compete with someone that's putting in 14, 15 hours of effort into his personal life. How do you compete with his personal life? And that's yeah. the funny thing. You put them side by side. They admire one another for exact extreme opposite reasons. And that's, the, that's when the penny dropped for me is that you, every person, no matter. So you could be as this one gentleman. The one guy probably wants the same degree of family life. And the other probably yeah. wants the same success in work life. Here's the big, big dilemma. We all are granted the same bandwidth. We have 24 hours a day in which to Absolutely. achieve all of those. So you need to pick your pick. And that's yeah. why we are saying that it comes with a sacrifice. If you have to tip the scale heavily into a work balance first, that means you will sacrifice family time, you'll sacrifice social time, you'll probably have to be quite alert, so you'll have to put in more hours sleeping and being cogniz uh, you know, cognizant of good sleeping habits, etc. The social guy, <laughs> he's going to have a party, he's going to have a blast, he's going to have such a wonderful social life, but his work is mm. going to have to take a backseat. And that is the dilemma. Yeah, so you're going to have to... Yeah, you're going to have to sacrifice at some point in your life. Uh, it's it's so interesting, Leon, because I think that that's probably the best way to to summarize it. Because and and it's exactly what you said. You know, we all get the exact same bandwidth. We we can all decide what we do with our time. And there's only so many so many hours in a day. Mm -hmm. And we each and every one of us, each and every single opportunity or each and every decision that we make, is either towards a specific goal or away mm -hmm. from a specific goal. If we set our goals on an annual basis and we had to really work it back and say that this is what I want to achieve by the end of this year, what am I going to have to do to achieve that? You'll probably find that there's going to be sacrifices that you need to make. The sooner that we realize this, I think the better it is for us, right? Because once we understand the fundamental flaw of life which is time. that nothing that everything well time as well but that everything comes at a price that absolutely nothing in this life is achieved without any sacrifice you can then start pinpointing and saying how much am i willing to sacrifice and this is this is where it gets interesting right is because i've not achieved so many goals in my life and then i've had a look back at them and I've asked myself, why didn't I even achieve this? Why didn't I accomplish this? But when I sat down and I did a lot of introspection, I actually really found that I never identified any sort of sacrifice that I was willing to make for that specific purpose. Yeah. So it wasn't important enough for me at that stage. For me, it was, it was more important to just sit around and chill on weekends and just regain my thoughts mm. after mm. a long week and... You just relax and I didn't necessarily want to become too active. I didn't want to go out and do the effort and all that. So I had to establish a baseline of what is it that I'm willing to sacrifice. And I think once we understand mm -hmm. that universal truth in life, we can sort of hack the achievements that we can make for ourselves or the things that we can achieve for ourselves. Yeah, that's true. And so I'm going to get a little bit deeper into this right now. So if you take the dilemma that you just explained, I think we all have this have similar dilemmas in our life. You can almost call it like a sacrificial yeah. dilemma. You know, we have to decide where to make sacrifices. There's a couple of things that one needs to take into consideration. And that's why I think this um, 
episode is so well timed is a couple episodes back we spoke about uh, chemicals in the brain and what gives you long term satisfaction versus short term etc and the thing is when you strike a good balance between whatever factors are important in your life, maybe you're not a family guy, maybe that's just not important, but maybe mm, you do mm. want to have a decent um, social life and, and friendship life uh, with a good, very successful career, you're going to have to make choices, and by choices I mean sacrifices, on what to let go of and what to take on. And the other problem is realize that the, f- the very reason why you took up that specific task or that extra activity or work uh, challenge is because you know that that's going to make you happy right and that's not going to make you like dopamine happy that's going to give you um, a sense of achievement perhaps it's going to give you a little bit of boost that's going to last maybe a week or even two weeks that that you're going to tell people about your ride and so on so you need to really think about if you are making these sacrifices which ones are actually making you joyful and long-term yep. happy that's because the next thing that i want to talk about is how do you decide which sacrifices yep. to make right um we all want to have a lot of money i don't think i've ever met someone that says i don't want any money mm-hmm. i want to be poor so we all want to make a lot of money i'm i'm of the assumption that most of us would agree that we want a good uh family life mm-hmm. and friends now you need to decide every day is about uh decisions so every day is about decisions you need to make a decision what are you going to do what are you not going to do so that what i'm trying to get at is i for example know that i want to look good and healthy you know that's why i embarked on a little bit of a fitness journey which i would not want to go into the details <laughs> of right now it started off well and like many it did not really sustain itself why did it not sustain itself it's because i don't really enjoy the mm. journey The thing is, what I don't realize is that the long-term joy of being healthy is what's actually important. But the short-term dopamine of doing the activity is not there. It's not enjoyable. Sometimes it is. I mean, some days, yes, it's nice crashing it out in the gym. But most days, most days not, yeah. you get so used to it, used to it, and you just mm, don't want to mm. do it, you know. Um, but you tend to forget the long-term joy that it might bring. So in my holistic view, I need to realize that in order to make this sacrifice, it truly is a sacrifice. I have to let go of the fact that I'm not going to get dopamine. I would rather want to sit and watch an episode of Survivor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and <laughs> you can choose to sit and watch yeah. Netflix the whole yeah. day. And that's going to give you the dopamine. But you're going to feel terrible afterwards because you just stole happiness because going to the gym would be one step closer to the long-term um, success of being I'm, I'm fit. I'm so glad that you brought that up. And I, I totally agree with you because if we have to have a look at it at a different angle as well, the same angle, different example, right? Is if you take, for instance, look, we all want nice things in our lives, right? We all want to splurge money. We all want to buy great things. We all want the fancy car in the driveway. And we want the nice white picket fence, awesome double Mm. story house with a pool, the jacuzzi, whatever you want, right? Like we all want those type of things. But in most of our lives, let's be honest, we're talking to average Joes here. You and me, we're both average Joes here. We have to sort of decide, right? There's, there's, there's a scale that we have to decide or a balance that we need to strike between mm. the two. We can't have a uh, Ferrari in the driveway and live in a mansion, right? We have to decide. So what, which way can we go? We can go and say, I'm going to buy the Ferrari and I'm going to live in a tiny little apartment, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to live in a mansion and I'm going to just buy a basic car. Um, so either way, we have to sort of you know, tip the scales a little bit to say, what is important to me in my life and where am I willing to sacrifice? So I'm going to sacrifice on the car because to me, I want a big, nice house that when people come and visit, you know, there's more than enough space for everyone. I've got all of the great stuff. I've got a jacuzzi. I've got a pool. I've got everything that I need. I've got a nice bright area, all of those type of things, right? But then I just drive a basic car. Or we strike an equal balance to say, I'm going to have a decent enough house to live in and I'm going to have a decent enough car. In some cases, I've really, enco- mm. I've really encountered people who drive way nicer cars than, they actually, you know, than the places that they live in. 
the same thing goes for splurging yeah, and true. spending money, right? Now, what you're talking about is the short-term dopamine hits. And this is when you go out and you go to the mall and you start splurging or you, you take out your paycheck and you instantly start buying things. You instantly start booking trips, Leon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whereas for me, because that's important for you, right? As you go and you book your holidays and you mm. start going out and you start going away and you do all those great things. For me, I'm an acute saver. I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times in the past. And it's weird, but it's something that, that happened in my life as well where I had to sort of make the decision to say, what is more important to me right now? Am I going to enjoy the dopamine hit of buying new things? Yes, absolutely. I, I still do. I'm still human, right? Buying new cool things, going away on holidays and all those things. Yes, absolutely. I want that. But I had to determine between those two, what is, what is, what is more important for me? And for me, it was a sort of, I had to reprogram myself and say that saving money long-term and investing money long-term is gonna detract from my dopamine hits now, but it's gonna give me those massive dopamine hits when I start actually making additional money or I um, start making passive income or whatever the case is, right? So in some way, shape or form, I had to sacrifice uh, certain parts of my life for this lifestyle. And that's just me, that's who I am. That's that's what I've determined for myself, mm. what is important to me. And to someone else completely on the other side of the fence, someone like you, you've already decided what is important for you. You've already said it, right? So many times in the past, you said that I'm here to live a good life and that's, that's what I'm gonna do. You know, money will come eventually, Money will always be there. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to spend it. And sometimes I wish I was more like you. But that's what, what the difference is, right? Is you've isolated what is important and what you're willing to sacrifice in life. And I've isolated mm. what I want to sacrifice in life. And at some point in our lives, mm. and we've spoken about this in the past as well, is that now I feel that I've overly obsessed about saving and investing and all that stuff. I also need to start living my life as well. So I'm equalizing the scales a little bit and trying to figure out ways that I can achieve sort of both at the same level um, because I feel that I've been sacrificing mm. so much in the one regard to gain on the other regard. And that's been going well for me, but it's not necessarily making me happy. And I see you doing exactly the same thing as well. I mean, I'm doing it's I was just gonna say, I'm doing exactly what you're doing, just in yeah. the opposite. So I'm, you know, starting to tie the knot a little bit and, you know, tie the noose around spending and starting to save a little, exactly. you know, it's because there's just you can't have both. You just simply can't be saving a ton of money yeah. and spending a ton of money. Mm. You and, and then that's just to talk about money. It's the same thing with relationships. You can't be giving eight hours a day to your mm. kids whilst giving 14 hours a day to your job. It's just, Absolutely. unfortunately, it's impossible. Again, it comes down to bandwidth um, and the amount of time that we all have equally assigned to us in a, in a given day. And that's that's the thing. And that's why I spoke about short-term dopamine versus long-term happiness and joy is because every single choice that you make and however your balance strikes out for you, you need to find a way that that balance gives you ultimately long-term joy so that you can be a happy yeah. person. And if you, for example, want to go out on vacation, now there's guys like me that like to go mm -hmm. regularly for smaller excursions, right? Then there's guys like you that go less regularly, but you go do the, you know, international trips and, you know, overseas mm. stuff and so on. And there's a give and take in both. My give is that I give less money and I get more frequent vacations. Yeah. You give a lot of money in an acute, like, you know, very coordinated and, and uh, focused mm. way and you get one major experience. And I think those two kind of equal each other out. At exactly, the end of the because day. what that means is that I'm sacrificing more of my time, more of my free time for work, and you're basically equalizing and spreading it over a long period of time, if you know what I'm saying, right? Is exactly. there's a give and take for both, mm. right? So even though you don't get to do international family trips and all those type of things, you're doing family trips locally, but you're doing it more regularly, which means that you're sacrificing in some exactly. regard. I'm sacrificing in another regard. But either way, we have to sort of find the balance. Yeah, exactly. It's equal. It's equal. And, and that's the thing. 
So success demands sacrifice. Your sacrifice looks different from mine. Mm. For you to go and give a ton of money towards one major vacation to me sounds, oh, wow, that's hard. How can you do that? Yeah. But then I may be just doing it more frequently, but I'm spending a lot less per excursion. Yeah. And it's the same with every example we've just mentioned. The one guy might have you know, two hours a day for his kids, but he's very successful in his job. So that's a sacrifice he makes. The other person is spending a ton of hours uh, doing his job and he's got a very good balance between doing a decent enough job, but maybe not as successful as his peers, but he's got a happy family as well. So at the end of the day, I think the point that we've now really driven home properly is that you need to think about success and sacrifice as a hand in hand thing. You can't um, have success in all departments of life. At least I don't, I've yeah. never met someone in my entire life that is, for example, financially successful and it just kind of fell out the sky and you didn't have to make any sacrifices to get there. Even the super successful people, you're going to get people that argue, yeah, but you know, Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates. Have you got any idea how much work it took in order to get those guys to where they were? Elon Musk, mm -hmm. for example, that guy spends four hours a day sleeping. The rest of the time he's running um, almost six businesses. Yeah. You know, it, it looks glamorous on the outside, but I promise you that guy is sacrificing in more the way, more ways than we can yeah, ever Yeah, it's imagine. basically determining what, where, where are your priorities, uh, isolating those priorities, yeah. understanding what that means for you. And then instantly cutting back on whatever doesn't necessarily serve that purpose or then saying, Correct. Um, let's sacrifice in those other areas. Yeah. yeah Leon, true. I absolutely love that. I think that we've driven the point home. Let's switch over to the real life <laughs> for today. And I'm going to hit it off, Leanne. I'll give you the mic. Mm. Hit us with your real life tip. Yeah. And then I'll take over from you. Yeah. Again, as usual, I think this entire episode... Uh, we kind of explained really, really well uh, what we mean by success and sacrifice and how those two, two things tie together. The biggest tip that I've got, and this I think is something that I still need to apply in my every single bloody day life, is the fact that don't look at other people and value their success over your successes um, and, and compare that is th that yeah. is the worst game that you can ever play. If you haven't walked a day in that person's shoes, nor did they in yours, they might admire you unknowingly, unbeknownst to you. And in order to get the maybe, I don't know, uh, I don't know, religious success that you might have, they'll have to give up their Sundays when maybe they are working the whole day in order to get the financial success that you are admiring from them. Yeah. If you, it's it's the most cancerous thing um, in anyone's life is to look at other people and admire them for their seeming success without having any context of how they got there. I spend a lot of time with people that I get to know, like when we're on a comfortable level, exploring them and finding out what they're about. And then I try and do that assessment of success. I I really have tried the last couple of years not to just look at surface value and then determine success of a person because yeah. that drove me insane. I've seen 16-year-old kids driving better cars than I have and I just get so pissed off. And anyone would, <laughs> right? And and that is, yeah. I immediately, I'm like, how can that guy be so young and be so successful? I don't know that he maybe studied five years. Maybe he was a Victrix Ladorum in his school and he's got no friends. Mm. but he's very successful financially, got a huge bank account, and that's what he's got. I don't know that. So take the time, learn more about the person, make the effort, find out what they're about, and then make an assumption upon am I lacking behind or not. Yeah, we all have lazy aspects. Sometimes yeah. you might truthfully be lacking behind um, if you have a certain standard and you see other people surpass your standards that's also necessary that's competition that is still very very healthy you must still compare and i think you won't actually be able to go forward if you don't compare yourself and match yourself up with peers and things like that so still hmm. make the effort to understand if someone is very very similar to you and you see that there's definitely a huge gap between that person's whatever success it is that you're measuring and your own to try and live up to that level of success because maybe you are 
um, missing opportunity somewhere to increase that success, whether it's financial, spiritual, physical, whatever. Um, I think I've said enough. I love, uh, yeah. That's pretty much my tip. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, Liam, because basically what that comes down to is the fact that you don't know what their schedules look like. You don't know what their responsibilities in their lives look like. Some people, if I had to compare myself with you, yes, absolutely. There's there's so much in life that I feel that you've accomplished that I haven't accomplished. Like obviously there's an age gap as well. Mm. But if I have to have a look at my life, if, if I had to invert it and, I, and you had to look into my life and say, yeah, but you know what, Mono always has time to go and do all these things mm. and you know, he's always busy on weekends, he's always exploring and doing his own, but I don't have kids, you know, I don't have a, yeah. the same household and type And because of I have that context, yeah. I understand why there's that difference. Exactly, <laughs> because you've got that context. Yeah. But if you were someone else, if you were a complete stranger looking at my life, you would instantly start comparing yourself and not knowing what my responsibilities look like. Mm. So not knowing that I am uh, inadvertently not you know, sacrificing in many parts of my life because I don't necessarily need to sacrifice in mm. those parts of my life as well. So I'm sacrificing TV to go out mountain biking, whereas you're sacrificing time with your kids to go mountain biking. You know? yeah, so yeah. so the, you can't really balance those two and, and sort of like compare them to each other. Absolutely beautiful, Leon. I love that. I think for my tip, um, I've just got one as well. I think it's a powerful one. If you had to really go and assess your life, and we've spoken about this briefly in the past as well, is that life is really complicated, but it can really be classified as a few different things, right? Mm. So you've got your your career aspects to life, which we all need to sort of focus on, whether you're self-employed um, and you're, you're working on your entrepreneurship or whether you're employed and you're working towards building this career path for yourself and everything. That's one aspect of your life. You've got your physical fitness or your physical health. You've got your mental health. You've got maybe spiritual spirituality, um, you've got your family, and on all of these different aspects of life, right? What I would say as my tip is to this, determine which are the two categories, or maybe even just one category. Maybe you want to start focusing on your career more mm. because you feel like you've been slipping a little bit. Uh, or maybe you feel that you've been working so hard in your career that you've been slipping on family or mm. spirituality mm. or mental or physical health, right? I would say from my tip, this week as an exercise right now, when you guys are done with this episode, go and write this down because this really helped my life as well. This really, really helped me so, so much is I identified that I was spending way too much time in one area of my life and I was lacking in another department. Go right now after this episode or if you're listening to this and you're sitting down with a pen and paper, write down what is the one area of your life that you want to focus on. Is it career? Is it family? Is it mental health? Is it physical health? And from that, what do you want to achieve in that? And what will that look like in terms of sacrifice? Mm. If you want to tip the scale a little bit and you want to balance it out, remember that example that we gave earlier on where I said that if I want to save a ton of money, I'm going to have to sacrifice on your know, holidays away mm. and activities on weekends and fun with friends and all of those type of things. If um, I want to go and do those things, then I'm going to have to sacrifice on my savings account. Yep. As simple as that. That's true. The same thing goes for work-life balance, right? If you want to start focusing more on family or fitness or health or mental health, whatever the case is, you're going to have to start sacrificing mm. some hours at work. And it's not that you're slipping at work. Not at all. Don't see it like that. See it as I'm, pri I'm reprioritizing mm. my life. I'm seeing that family is neglected and that my career is stable and I'm choosing to move some of these puzzle pieces around. And I think that's just my one no, tip, that's, Leon. That is actually very, very well put. I think with those two tips combined, I think we literally nailed the topic into the wall. Eh? Um, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. I think it's, it's something that I'm still learning as I go along. And it's something that I've, I'm absolutely not perfect at. And I think maybe as an outgoing tip, uh, don't be too hard on yourself. I think everyone struggles with this. You know, I go through some slum mm -hmm. times and I just feel lazy and I don't want to work on my goals and I don't want to work on all these things that I want to be successful at because being successful in any of those departments takes work and courage, right? And and, mm -hmm. and that's energy, mm -hmm. that's time, that's sacrifice in and of itself. Uh, being successful as a parent, for example, comes of in and of itself with a lot of sacrifice in order to just be able to keep two living things or five living things alive for that period of time. So 
I really think it's important for everyone to kind of reanalyze this. I like the fact that you want us to go and just look at where you want to tip the scale into which favor a little bit and, mm. um, you know, realize that everyone's got 24 hours. So you have to decide if, if you're going to put, pour more time into one thing, you are going to take, take away time from another. Uh, that's just the fact of life. Yeah, absolutely. And and exactly. I think maybe just to add on top of that as well is that once you're looking at it from that perspective, like you just said, you, we all have 24 hours in a day. You have to work it back and you have to say that, you know, if I have a major goal, maybe it is fitness. Maybe I want to start regaining some control over my physical body and like, you know, the way that I look and get myself ready for this wedding coming up or for this, this show coming up or for this weekend away with the family or the friends or whatever the case is, I need to work it back and look at my daily habits and say, I only have 24 hours in a day. So from that, what does my schedule look like and where can I start trimming on a daily, mm. on a weekly, on a monthly basis to achieve that annual goal of ours? Because we headed back into almost December time now when it's time for... Um, your new year's resolutions and all those type of things start working on those things now so that you can build the habits so that by the time that you hit december and january you're already in you've already got cadence yeah. you know you've, you already have some momentum going and all those things so working it on daily weekly and monthly uh, aspect i think that's definitely mm. going to help yeah. you leon it's been an absolute great episode it's been real, man. always enjoy having these chats with you there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Success demands sacrifice. So it's yeah, up to it you to decide what it is that you're willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If you derived some great value from this, go ahead and remember to rate and review the show. It's going to do wonders for us to start spreading the word, to start spreading the love, and start affecting other people's lives and impacting more lives, right? So if you're happy with the show, if you're happy with what you've learned and heard so far, please go ahead and hit that rate or review button so we can start getting our show ranked. We would really, really appreciate it. And with that being said, we're looking forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. And this is me signing out, Mono. As usual, you were joined by Leon. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay happy. We'll see you next week. Cheers. What's up, guys and girls? If you've derived some great value from our show thus far, please take a second to rate and review us on the platform that you're tuned in on. This will really help us to grow the show and reach more and more people to spread the positivity and change more and more lives. So it will literally just take you a second to rate and review us. And who knows, perhaps you could directly be responsible for changing someone's life today. We look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Until then, cheers.